So, back a couple years ago, I was sitting in a room late on a Saturday night feeling rather depressed. Nothing specific caused this feeling, but it ate away at me quite a lot. I was bored out of my mind in life for a short and brief while, it honestly felt meaningless. I remembered hearing about a manga called A Silent Voice that was supposedly quite good, so I picked it up and 30 some odd chapters later, I put it down. I walked away from that manga, never to return. And not for the reason that you're probably thinking. I adored what I just read. It changed my depressed state into a feeling I don't think I have a word to describe it. It had such an impact on me that I didn't want the manga to end. I didn't want to reach the last chapter that had been translated, nor did I know how this series should end. I enjoyed this manga so much I was afraid to read more because there would come a time where there wouldn't be more chapters to read, and it's silly, I know. Not reading it isn't really stopping it from ending, but in my mind that made a whole lot of sense, as I I always knew I had more chapters to read and it hadn't ended, at least for me. Now fast forward some years later, this same manga got an anime adaptation in the form of a two hour film. I ignored it. This series that honestly healed me felt too good to be true and I didn't want to see it conclude. Fast forward to 2019, I have finally finished my journey with a silent voice and I don't recall being as touched from any anime such as this film has touched me. I've cried, I've laughed, I've been scared, I've had plenty of emotions with anime, but for me, I truly don't think I have a word that can describe this feeling. Believe me, I looked through many words in the dictionary, so I'm going to refer to this feeling as the silent voice effect, where life made sense. Every emotion I have ever felt swept through me all at once, and so many things from my past hurt and became so much clearer because of this little series that revolves around bullying and overcoming depression that really made me reflect on life and people as a whole. I'm no expert on the hearing impaired, and I fully admit this. I've never had first-hand interactions with someone who is deaf. The most I've been around are those with hearing aids. So as far as I know, this could be a horrible depiction on those who are hearing impaired, but from the short amount of research online that I did, I think it's safe to say that isn't the case. As walking out of this film and the manga, both times I felt respect for those with hearing disabilities. At no point did it feel to me as if this was mocking or taking something that does affect a large number of people quite severely as something to be made fun of, but rather everything this girl Shoko does, says, has done to her feels heartfelt and not made out to be anything other than an eye-opening experience. The good and bad towards her serves a bigger purpose than most might want to give credit to. A Silent Voice may be viewed as a story of a Mary Sue who needs to be protected by her ex-bully by some. I've almost seen verbatim that said online, but in actuality this is a story about communication. The struggles of finding ways to express your true feelings and letting those complex emotions bottle up till you're ready to express explode, which might result in thoughts like suicide crossing your mind. Shoya, our male lead character, is a bully. In sixth grade, when the hearing impaired transfer student Shoko transfers in, he is an absolute dick to her. Torments her, mocks her, and she continues to smile and attempts to be his friend while struggling to fit in with her class. She eventually has to switch schools because the bullying becomes too much because kids follow the crowd, and those who appear to have status will be viewed as the correct ones, and horrible deeds don't get punished, well, that is until teachers call out punk ass kids and their shit. Our main character is the reason she lost eight hearing aids. He is a scumbag, but early into this story the tides turn when Shoya is ousted by his fellow classmates and Shoko is no longer around for target practice so the hunter becomes the prey and the bully gets bullied. People for as innovative and creative as we are, we are cruel. We are also kind, but we have this horrible way of easily doing bad things that can haunt us for our entire life. Anyone and everyone can and will do things they will regret, but most can come back from these disgusting actions. Because the thing with humans is that most actions aren't unfixable. I view certain cases as too far gone, but for as horrible as bullying is and as much as what Shoya and the others did to this poor and innocent girl, you can come back from it which is the entire purpose of this story. A Silent Voice isn't a redemption tale. It's not some bully saving a Mary Sue. It's a tale of two different people who can't communicate and because of that lose themselves in their emotion. Shoya, a man who feels as if this world is catching up to him and all the torment he's currently experiencing is what has to happen and he doesn't deserve friends or forgiveness and should just fade away. Where Shoka, you have a girl feeling as if she causes everyone around her heartache because of her lack of hearing and maybe she too should just fade away. Why why do people bully? It can be from self-doubt, feeling like you're lesser than the others, so you pick on those weaker than yourself. Could be because one person does it, you assume you should too. Maybe there's no logical reason at all. 
It happens to all of us, and at some point or another, maybe without realizing it, we all have bullied someone or have been bullied ourselves. Back in school when I was a wee lad, I had a bully who honestly made my life hell. Fast forward six or so years later, that same bully became my best friend. And I bet you're asking yourself, why? The answer? Because we both talked one day and seemed to have a lot in common, more than we first thought. Time healed wounds that caused me so much suffering I chose to forgive and decided not to focus on the past. That same man was my best friend all throughout high school, and though we parted ways since then, the kid who made my life hell ended up making my life enjoyable and tolerable in different sections of my life when I was struggling with so much depression because of what was happening in my life at that time. Because people can change, and who you are today matters more to me than who you were yesterday as long as you continue on the correct path. Which is why I was so on board with the tale that skips to years later when Shoya and Shoko start growing a unique relationship together because though the film starts off so horrible, you can tell that this Shoya is a changed man. And from my own experience, I know this can happen. Watching this film made me relate, made me upset because I could see myself in certain characters' shoes, and sadly, not always in a good way. In scenes depicting horrible bullying, I can easily see myself be in that situation and doing some of these actions to a poor girl just trying to make friends. Because when you feel bad about yourself, you do anything to fit in, and it disgusts me. Which is one of the reasons I love this tale so much, because it feels so human because of the good and the bad that it showcases. Because of my own experiences with bullying, both being the bully and being bullied, I know these two parties can meet and forgive. So watching a story showcase a once bullied deaf girl grow and fall in love with her former bully, I bought into very easily. My best friend for six years used to make me cry at home after school thinking there was something wrong with me. Imagining this level of bullying that poor Shoka went through and seeing a man willing to change and learn sign language for her, it's clear why she would grow to love him. Since Shoya got a taste of his own medicine for years, Years, it makes it very easy to transition from hating the kid to feeling sympathy for him just minutes later. That you're wishing the cruelty would stop even though a few minutes prior, you were actually wanting him to suffer just as he is. The story starts off with him wanting to commit suicide, and anyone who's ever been at a truly low point in their life can relate, and for those who can't, you're immediately confused and want to give this poor man a hug. But like most, he realizes that it does more than just numb his own suffering, it also makes those around him break. Watching Shoya learn to communicate and find true joy in his life is immediately gripping, as despite being able to hear and talk, he truly can't listen or properly express his own feelings, and in doing so makes him feel as if he doesn't deserve happiness because of of what he did to Shoko in the past. Which makes it so beautiful to see this duo slowly build a true friendship to a love over these two hours. Sure, the film never goes full romance, but sometimes show and not tell with a more open-ended outcome is a better path to follow, at least in my books, and I'd like to believe eventually the two did get together given enough time. Nearly every moment between these two, my heart fluttered. Whether it be a sad or happy scene, the same feeling was almost always present, because from where they started off to where they currently were at, it gives you hope for the world that it can change, that we as a people are better than the lows that are fed to us in the news and online each day, and that people for the most part can change, including ourselves. That we don't need to follow mobs, that when we see real acts of growth in attempts to better oneself, we should reward that, not burn them at the stake. You start the enemy off with a man willing to die, and end the film with that same man willing to die for another. Surrounded by a complex group of friends who all are douchebags in their own way for the most part, but every character I thought I'd hate till the story concluded, I walked out thinking, sometimes we all act like idiots, and the fact that every character just turned out to either be a broken or confused character in their own way struggling to fit in and properly expressing themselves, they ended up being able to start talking with others by the end, so I came out feeling sympathetic for everyone. Communication is harder than it should be for most of us, and that's what makes this story so compelling to me, is how even though I didn't relate to every character, and I wasn't able to see myself in everyone's shoes, because of certain life experiences and how well they made you buy into characters as genuine people, I understood where everyone was coming from. I understood why some girls play nice and blame others because of the fear of being left out. I understood why characters acted cool even at the cost of another's happiness. Why it's so hard to change who you are even when you know you're in the wrong because what if I get left out too and maybe I'm too far gone and have committed to this lifestyle even though I should have grown out of it and this phase by now and why just talking and explaining yourself is so challenging while going through school. Because kids convince themselves it's the most important time in their lives, not realizing almost everyone around them, they won't be seen after they leave those doors once and for all as they graduate. That even though we easily can, at the same time we just can't be a decent person to everyone because we as a society think we have to be above others in order to matter. 
So watching this complex and bleeble group of kids come across as what I remember from school and at times related to both the bully and bullied perspective, it made me feel a wave of melancholy. I know plenty will find certain characters they'll want to call out as they got away without really true growth to make up for their mistakes, but the final 10 or so minutes of this film really showed me that everyone did grow and start talking alongside each other, and though people have their differences, even if the person who bullied you yesterday made you hate life, it doesn't mean there won't be a better tomorrow where that same person could become a friend or at the very least is making an effort to change. And though it can take time, we just need to see that the horrible bully is making some effort, which I personally felt we got, especially with Ueno, where her last conversation with Shoku is completely different than anything we'd seen up to that point. I could tell going forward the hostility would die down and she would continue to grow as a person even if the two never would truly become friends. You don't have to forget what's happened in the past, but you can forgive like Shoku does. And even if these people don't become your friends, there's billions of people waiting out there for you if you just decide to talk with them. What starts off as a love story between these two quickly becomes something so much more. You have Tomohiro who because Shoya saved him from being robbed and bullied becomes his best friend and truly shows him as well as the viewer early into the film how people can change and because of his kind actions currently he now deserves a true chance to change and have a better lifestyle and true happiness. The two's dynamic is some of the most heartwarming scenes simply because up till that point he had no true friends friends, and to have someone call him a best friend, it changed his perspective on life completely, especially since he was willing to die at the start of the film thinking he didn't deserve any sort of true relationship be it friendship to love. The man always has his back, and you feel as if you want to be Tomohiro's best friend because that guy's best friend goals, and no one can tell me otherwise. Yuzuru, Shoka's little sister, who starts off quite hostile towards Shoya for obvious reasons, develops into his little sister by the end because without expecting anything in return, he tries to not only help her, but her sister more times than you can count in this film. Whether it be her or the people he bullied people with or who bullied him, after the time skip and Shoya being an outcast, he starts acting like a decent human who wants nothing in return but to make amends for what he's done and then disappear. But because of Shoko coming into his life, he starts seeing the world in another light. He can appreciate the good times with her and those around him. Shoko is just as broken as he is. They both hate themselves and their life. For her, it's feeling as if she makes others' lives worse because of her disability and if she were just gone, everyone would be better off, including Shoya. For him, he feels like a burden because all he does is hurt people and cause them issues because of his acting out. Both can't communicate, but for different reasons. But as the film wraps up, they both confront their feelings alongside this hefty cast of characters, and I walked out feeling totally fulfilled, and my worries of not wanting to see this story conclude were dissolved. Because I needed this ending. I thought having it over would make me feel sad, and I couldn't continue. But honestly, where the film leaves off is how I want it to conclude. A group of characters who all grew or are starting to grow who can move on in their life expressing the good and the bad while these two lovebirds continue on their path that I know will only get better. Not having everything 100% laid out but rather I get to finish many details in my head is what I needed from this story. When I first read a good chunk of the manga I originally thought it'd be a great TV anime but walking out of this film I'm quite happy with the decision for it being a movie. Primarily because of how sharp the movie looks and how this style of storytelling really works better with a faster pace with more room for your imagination to fill in the blanks. Every character model and background is so highly refined and detailed that even the most basic of shots left me damn near speechless. The character designs are all unique and not comparable to other school anime as of late, but the way light reflected off their characters and the world, the way colors exploded to give a sense of hope and dread all wrapped up into one beautiful package, and with how shots were framed to capture a unique outlook on this story that helped surpass what I remembered from the manga. The amount of polish and attention that went into these two hours makes me so happy that this was a movie, because as good as TV anime can look, a story this beautiful deserved true beauty that only a film format could deliver. Though I have to say my favorite detail to the visuals is how Shoya sees most people around him with an X sticker on their face, as he's afraid to look up and see their face, afraid how they might view him and what they might have to say to or behind his back. Only those truly close to him have their faces not hidden. A character like Shoko has a very visible area to her character that shows us what makes this world a challenge to her. Those who might judge her, those who will have a hard time communicating, or maybe just those who will just feel sorry for her and don't treat her as a normal girl like she would like. 
So having this very noticeable visuals penalize Shoya makes for both he and Shoko seem like they are two sides of the same coin and can help the other tackle this world head on. Which by the end of the film, because they are both there for the other, the world stops seeming so scary. The stickers can come off and we don't have to hate ourselves anymore. And even though some may argue the two's relationship grows rather fast, I feel the story does a great job at exploring Shoko's character early on and how even when he was a bully, she still wanted to be his friend because she has such a pure mind that wants to see the good in everyone. So seeing what he did when she wasn't around and learned sign language to make amends, you get why she hangs out with him and why she falls in love with him so quickly. The visuals tell a lot to the story as the film purposely uses the show-not-tell format for areas like Shoko being upset because she only has one hearing aid now. The viewer can piece together it's because her hearing got worse in that one ear, so it's so bad that it's pointless to wear the other now. The film never tells you this, but the visuals showcase this entire moment with well-thought-out visual directing. When a family member passes away, you'll see characters visibly upset, but they won't state what caused them to feel this way, rather, they need the support and then the visuals will tell the rest of the story without needing to hear a single word spoken. It can be how Shoko feels vibrations to understand the sounds around her, which the anime carefully details. That's what happens for the entire two hours, and why I'm so thankful that this was a film. I watched this with the Japanese dub, so I can't speak for the English dub fully, but her actress nailed what I think a deaf woman should sound like. The first time she speaks, you might feel like this sounds weird. Maybe you have thoughts like some of the kids around her, but I love how you truly buy into this is a real deaf person, and I immediately felt bad for thinking this was off-putting, as she deserves to speak like anyone else. Within seconds, I changed from this is hard to listen to, to then this is beautiful and this girl deserves to talk. The way she sounds, I felt a strong amount of respect for the hearing impaired, so it doesn't sound like a mom mockery, but rather this is a real girl who is deaf and it stunned me. In the English dub, they actually casted a real deaf actor for the role, and though I didn't watch the whole movie dubbed, I really enjoyed her performance and comparing it to the Japanese counterpart, it makes my appreciation for the Japanese dub that much higher. Everything about this film is magical to me, and I think my experience with this story overall will be unique for me and me alone. I know there's plenty who view certain characters like Ueno as someone who got off with no penalty for what she did, and how the bad actions just seem to be forgotten. It's easy to judge others, and it's hard to put ourselves in their shoes. And while I disagreed with all of her behavior, I know how easy it is to get lost in your own thoughts thinking you're the right one and it isn't until you get older that you can reflect on how you acted in the past and truly recognize what you've done. So you try to make amends for your shitty behavior that caused others suffering. And if someone tries to change, even though it may take some time, I will accept it and give them that chance. After the events of the festival and the fireworks wrap up, seeing our central duo and where they went afterwards, and the fact that this entire group talks to one another, it makes me reflect on my my own times from my past and apply it to the story, where we might have hurt one another before, but today we are trying to be better than we once were. That people can change, and even though I hated characters like Elena for a majority of the film, my final moments with her weren't a negative experience. Nearly every character in this film makes mistakes, while others may have just had a bad hand dealt from day one like Shoko. But walking out, I feel like they all grew in some way, and we're going to continue to change for the better in the future. That the challenge of talking was lifted, and everyone finally got to say how they felt and they grew stronger because of the hard times. Because from my own experiences, those that can talk and work things out, even after the worst things have been done or said, some of the strongest relationships can be formed from them, exactly like we saw in this complex and very human cast of characters. This is a film that I would recommend to anyone, anime fan or not, simply because I think there's a life lesson that each and every one of us can appreciate, whether it be from situations you've seen, heard about, were a part of, there's so much to reflect on and help make everyone a better person. Reflect on your own mistakes. Mistakes, learn from these characters' mistakes and see that people can change and that the most important thing is to not give in to the darkness and reach out and speak your thoughts even in the darkest of times so someone can reach back and help you overcome those challenging times. That you're important to someone even if you don't know it. That everyone can and someday will have a relationship like Shoko and Shoya had in this story. But most importantly, that people should have more chances at correcting their mistakes rather than simply wanting them to burn for them. That we as humans can and should continue to grow. Rarely do I get this move from anime, to the point that I can see my own world in it, but this most certainly is one of those cases because goddamn does this feel realistic and easily has become one of my favorite stories in all of anime. For those who have any thoughts on a silent voice or this video, I'd love to know yours down in the comment section below. Maybe you were moved like myself or possibly you hate everything that this film went for. Whatever you're feeling, be sure to let me know. As well, if you did enjoy these ramblings, remember to leave a like to show some support and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. And lastly, if you want to help directly fund and support the channel to make these time-consuming videos possible, there's always my Patreon. But that's all from me, so until next time everyone, please take care, be kind to one another, and have a good one.